Welcome back to the Ed Sullivan, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, you know my first guest this evening from Forgetting Sarah Marshall, How I Met Your Mother, and Dispatches from Elsewhere. He is now one of the creators, writers, and stars of the new series, Shrinking. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Jason Siegel. <laughs> Time, every time I've, I've interviewed you, and I always enjoyed it's always a fun interview talking we to you. We have a really nice time together. I always forget what a large man you are. Yeah, I'm a big dude. Yeah, you're like, you're kind of got a rangy. You could, you ever played a cowboy? No, but I've been, oh, once someone said to me, a, a pretty famous director said to me in a thick Irish accent, you have what John Wayne had. You only have 1% of it, but you've got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. It's been two years since I spoke to you. Last, yeah. last time During it was on... Uh, yeah, this fourth interview, but the uh, last time it was on Zoom. This is, yes. much, this is much nicer. And you talked a lot at the time about your solitary walks. You went on a lot of solitary I was walks. Long, long walks, yes. yes. And did you spend a lot of the, a lot of the pandemic alone? Uh, <laughs> I did, yeah. I had, a, I had a breakup right before the pandemic, which was very, very sad. And, uh, yeah, oh, wow. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. We made it through, made it through. Uh, and uh, right... Right before we went into lockdown, a local ice cream shop opened in my town. So I went in kind of sad, like 9.30 p.m. right before closing. Like visibly heartbroken kind of person. I mean, I was a grown man alone at 9.30 buying ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> then, right? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. And there was, a, there was like a really kind-faced, like attractive uh, woman who was serving ice cream. And she said really nice stuff to me about like, how I met your mother and I love these movies and got me through a tough time. And then she gave me my ice cream on a cone. And then she said, uh, never forget the joy you bring to the world. And yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so I, so I went That's home. That's like an instant connection. Yeah, yeah. I really, I really felt it. It was like a, a rom-com, you know, yeah. with Tom Hanks or something. And so <laughs> then <laughs> I went home and then we went into lockdown. But sure. they stayed open delivering. And so every once in a while, when I needed that feeling of connection, I would order the ice cream. And it would arrive in a bag. And the first time it arrived, she had handwritten on the bag, never forget the joy you bring to the world. I'm like, oh, wow. I, I started to see my new life with, with this wonderful with person. Ice cream lady, yeah. yeah. So then we came out of lockdown. And uh, I went to go kind of make good on this meat cute. And uh, as I'm walking up, I see someone coming out of the store with a bag of ice cream. And on the bag, it said, never forget the joy you bring to the world. <laughs> and it turns out, it's just their slogan. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, man. I, I, I just wanted, I got myself a lovely, a lovely sandwich, and the girl behind the counter said, I have the meats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That we, was she said we, that but it meant that personal. between the two of us, That's between right. the two of us, we had the meats. Yeah. Okay. Well, every, everybody w wants to feel like they're making a connection, you yes. know, regardless of whether they are. The the new this new series shrinking. Yes. Is is about is about uh, people trying to make connections. You you play a psychologist in yeah, this. Yeah. I okay. think interestingly enough, like we all came out of the past two years, whether or not we specifically lost somebody or just this feeling of lost time. We're all grieving something that we know we're not gonna get back. My character in the show is grieving the loss of a wife. And it's basically a character who's in the midst of his own nervous breakdown, but continuing to practice therapy. So none of these patients know that their therapist is himself, like, not doing so hot. Wow. And we, we have a scene here coming up. Can we sure. can explain what's going on here? Yes, this is right after I have uh, kind of snapped in, in a therapy session and just started doing my new technique, he can't take it anymore. He's just gonna tell his patients what to do. Like, here's what you're gonna do, and you're gonna do it now, and don't come back until you've done it. And so now, it's normally kind of non-directional, kind of like, let's follow yeah, that feeling. Kind how of. do you feel about it? But exactly. this guy can't do it anymore. He wants people out of their ruts. I've just done it. I know I've crossed some lines, and now I go tell my boss, who is uh, maybe the coolest man of all time. Jim. Hey. Hey, kid. 
How are you doing? I'm normal, you know. It's a normal day, normal day. Doing it, doing it normal style. Hey, you know what I was thinking, Paul? Is it about how you're just doing it normal style? What, what are you thinking? Do you guys ever get so mad at your patients that all of a sudden you just want to like, shake them? Oh, we don't shake them. No, I know, I know. I, I, I'm rooting for them. I am. I'm like, come on, you f up person. You can change. And then they just never do. Compassion fatigue. We all hit those walls. Yeah. You ask questions, you listen, you stay non judgmental, and you don't make that face. Sorry. That's gotta be fun. Yeah. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, I will ask Jason what he was like as a child. Oh. Stick around. <laughs>